Welcome to the Council City Council meeting, March Tuesday, March 10th. Stay for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment of silence for troops on active duty. Thank you. And uh, Council Jews himself, please start my start for a right. Alan Zappo. Rich Vice Council. Mary Mark. Eric Carlson. Mary Fortier. Calvin Brown. Tell Clerk Teresa. This is John McCullough. And American Cartier. And the other two. Approval minutes of the regular city council meeting on February 10th, 2015. Approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Item number three. Public participation. We have Michael Dudko, please. Michael J. Dudko, 1. 16 Lewis Road. And before I begin, uh, I was surprised. Uh, uh, I want to speak on a specific issue, number 17, and I uh, signed up and I requested that I would like to speak when the issue came up. This was done even five years ago, and I was very surprised that it is not done. This is not the policy anymore. I believe through democratic discussion, you should allow the public if an uh, item uh, is to be discussed thoroughly and with all the active participants, you should be allowed to speak on that issue when it comes up. I, I, the city probably allows people, uh, uh, your, your functionaries, to speak at that point. Uh, I'm just very shocked. Maybe in the future I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this. This new policy is not a, is not a good policy at all. Forces the public and not alongside the issue. Okay. Uh, uh, does the city attorney want to say something? Uh, I, I, I thought I heard something from the city attorney. Yeah, I don't know. If, uh, it, it, it's, it, as far as you know, it's legal. Yes. Okay. We're okay. Not Am I addressing? You, they're not stopping you from speaking. You have you right. your option to come uh, speak. See, I, I don't want to waste my time. I don't know how many speakers are signed up tonight. Only two. Only two. You know, I don't really want to. I, I have a certain amount of time. Uh, we could maybe discuss this in, in, in the future. I'll, I'll come and discuss. But I'm very shocked at this new policy. Okay, item 17 is what I want to address. What I want to address. It's a resolution regarding economic development grant for $140,000 which includes $8,000 for job creation to GMN, GMN USA LP for purposes of designing and constructing a manufacturing facility of approximately 28,000 square feet at 181 Business Park Drive. Now, uh, this is this piece of property and, and this I have nothing against this, this company coming in. Uh, GMN, what I know about them, they're a German uh, originating company. I have a great respect for German bez business uh, uh, efficiency and, and all. And, uh, but I have nothing against that, that, that firm. But this money is going coming on the backs of how eminent domain has been practiced in this city. Uh, the property again, as I see this as, as a sort of a corporate welfare, as the kickback to, to uh, businesses when they obtain end up obtaining eminent domain property that, that was attain, obtained at a very low price by by procedures and and uh, the uh, legal uh, hired guns of, of the city. Uh, I, I happen to know, okay, that the land went for $58,000 an acre. This 140, they, they've had approximately five. Uh, uh, that, so they're getting uh, roughly, in my viewpoint, they're getting back something like $26,000. So that 
So they're ending up with the property at about $32,000 an acre. I, I, I'm looking at that, that, that this is the payoff with corporate welfare, with corporate welfare uh, in, in the eminent domain as it was practiced in this city. You're you end up delivering to the third party the lowest possible price. That's why the city wants to uh, use tough tactics when using eminent domain. They want to get the lowest price possible. You hire the, the, the appraisers that in the past have always given you the, the, the lowest amount of money in, uh, valued on a piece of property. And then the person who's the victim, uh, he hires an appraiser, uh, more than likely it, it's the judge's judge halfway. The the person who's a victim automatically loses. This is the payoff after after eminent domain is practiced. This grant money that that's given to the firm. I happen to know next just adjacent the the land was worth two hundred twelve thousand dollars an acre. Two hundred twelve. And, and and this is corporate welfare where where the third party. Okay, thank you, Mr. Duncan. Yeah, Ends up with a with a a deal. A deal. Okay. Uh, maybe in the future. Thank you very much. Good evening. Ron Rose. Good evening, Sean Rose, 53 Lancaster Road. Um, back in 440 BC, uh, Pericles from the first democracy ever created, once said that although only a few may originate a policy, we are all able to judge it. So I, on that note, I'd like to commend Chairman Veets for upholding Section 49 of our city charter, which allows the public to speak at any Board of Commission meeting. Um, and tonight I'd like to talk about a few things, but basically I want to cut right to the survey because uh, Basically, I was accused of cherry picking information, and it's it's very amusing. It's ironic that I got accused of that, um, because if you go through the survey and you look at what people strongly agree, and I'm talking about open-ended questions, not um, how strongly do you agree on this or how strongly I, I omitted that stuff. So if you look at everything over 20 percent, the only questions that you're going to get answers for are the following. Um, are you a Bristol resident? Yes, 100%. 20 years or older, 100%. Have you lived in Bristol for how long? More than 20 years is 56%. What was the main reason for moving to Bristol? Location, close to family or close to highways? 49%. Or you were born here? 32%. Do you see yourself living in Bristol? Yes, 71%. No, 24.8%. There's my favorite. What do you think the city should do to improve the quality of life in Bristol? Number one answer, 27%. I don't know or I refuse to answer that question. I thought it was going to be something different. Didn't I really don't like the chatter over there. So just stop. Um, what would you like the city to do to improve downtown Bristol? 31%. More business, shopping, and entertainment. Renaissance came in at 3.7%, Depot Square at 1.2%. Are you considering moving to a different home within the next five years? 40%. Yes. 53%. No. Tell me what you think your next housing choice will be. Move to a single family home, 30.2%. Move to a smaller single family home, 23.8%. Are there any other issues related to current or future development in Bristol you feel the city should look at? Number one answer, don't know or refuse, 37%. Number two, no. Pardon me, 20.8% said no. Development at Depot Square was 0.5%. How would you rate the overall condition of the city maintained roads in Bristol? That got, that got favorable, of course, that was before the winter, but there's no one here's fault. So, but I thought I'd mention that because it's up there. Um, letter grade for the city school system 44%. Overall quality of life is good 76%. Don't see any reason making drastic, drastic changes there. 97% of respondents were head of households. 65% of respondents 
don't have any children under the age of 18 living at home. Employment status. Only 39.5% of respondents were working full time. 28.4% were retired. Now, if I was a cherry picker, I would say we need more affordable housing in Bristol because that must be the reason why everyone's moving out of Bristol. It's not the way I look at it. And most people wouldn't. Because if you look at the top answers and you put them all together, you're going to find that more people were concerned about crime and taxes than they were about downtown revitalization. But if you want to ask the question, what's the number one answer for the most important issue in Bristol, number one was downtown development. Would anyone like to ask if that question means the same thing to me as it does the people that made the conclusion on this? Because it's the most important issue to me, but it doesn't mean we need to spend money on it. Big difference between what do you want the city to do and what's the most important issue, I think. That's my opinion if I'm entitled to that. Okay, um, basically, there's another, there's, there's quite a bit of misconceptions going on, but I'm just going to cut to it. Um, I've been accused of demagoguery and fear mongering. The federal debt has doubled since 2007 to $18 trillion. The state debt has increased to $42 billion. The nation's money supply has increased by more than 65%, leading to a higher cost of living. There's been a 30% increase in food stamps in the state of Connecticut since 2010. And, according to uh, something that was brought up last night, Bristol averaged one foreclosure per day in, in the last quarter of last year. So, um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if, if you're going to tell me that the economy is in recovery and it's a good idea to invest money that taxpayers don't have, I'm going to say you're. I think you're wrong, and so do the residents of Bristol. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Just so you know, you've used two minutes for next month. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'll be sick, and then, then it'll work out. <laughs> I don't hold my breath. Sorry, my far right. I have two. Um, this weekend we have uh, two events that benefit the community. The first one is a fundraiser breakfast at American Legion II for the Memorial Military Museum that's commemorating a bunch of um, very interesting military issues over the course of 2015. Um, that's from 8 to 11. And in the afternoon, the Rotary Club's having their second annual pizza challenge. So um, for those of you who don't like to cook, Sunday's a great day. Um, and I just also want to just make another pitch that the Bristol Blues are still looking for host families. So anybody who might know of anybody who has an extra bedroom for June, July, and the first half of August, we'd be interested in talking to them. It's a great experience, very enriching for kids if you have kids who do play sports, great bonding experience, and uh, obviously great entertainment all summer for the family. Thank you. Yes. Um, since next Tuesday, the City Council won't be around in Canyon or uh, Sean Rooska or Ed Gutko. Uh, you might want to consider going to see the Bristol Brass and Wonder Ensembles concert uh, Tuesday, March 17th, 7 p.m. at Prospect Methodist Church called the Sounds of Spring. I believe it's a free will offering. I have a few things. Um, I think we have survived winter. Um, I don't know if I'm premature. I, I hope I'm not jinxing anything, but. However, I need a wind sorry, I thought that was me. <laughs> 700 blood drives were canceled last month across the country due to the weather. Uh, the Red Cross is trying to get back on track. One special blood drive is taking place on Tuesday, March 31st from 1 to 6.30 at the Hillside Community Church, 435 Broad Street. This drive is special because it has been set up to on, um, in honor of premature twins who were born last fall at the hospital of Central Connecticut. Cameron and Olivia Plourd are the twin daughters of Bristol firefighters Brian and Adrian Plourd. The event is sponsored by the Bristol Firefighters Local 773 and the Hospital of Central Connecticut. You can go on the Hospital of Central Connecticut's website for more information. In other health news, Public Works employee Matt Reganey had another checkup yesterday and both he and his wife Jen, his liver donor, are doing well and recuperating at home. So we're very thankful for that. Spring
spring is almost here, again, despite what it sometimes looks like outside. And with the arrival of spring comes many annual community events, including the OM show on April 17th and 18th, the Bob Watson Scholarship Dinner on April 23rd, the Forestville Village Duck Race on May 3rd, followed by the second annual Pine Lake Fishing Derby on May 9th, just to name a few. I have tickets to both the Watson Dinner and the Duck Race if anyone's interested. And lastly, don't forget to use your Taste of Bristol cards throughout the month of March. Just a couple of quick announcements uh, highlighting some interesting, some good things happening for young people around town in the next couple of months. Uh, the annual Academic Bowl will be held on Saturday, March 28th at noon at Lewis Mills High School in Burlington, uh, 26th Lions Road, Burlington. Uh, the Academic Bowl, for those of you who don't know, is uh, an academic-oriented competition for students from Bristol Eastern, Bristol Central, St. Paul, Lewis Mills, and Terryville have a high school? Is it Terryville? Ter okay, there you go, Terryville High School. Um, and when I was in high school, I participated in it. It's a, it's a great time if you're somebody that's interested in hearing about uh, what young people think about public policy issues, if you like trivia, if you like poetry, if you like music, it's a great time uh, and it's, it's a cool event to see young people engage in all those things and compete against one another. It's a lot of fun. So that's Saturday, March 28th at noon at Lewis Mills High School. Also, from Youth Services, the Bristol Youth Commission is seeking nominations uh, of youth of all <coughs> ages who in the last year have volunteered to make a meaningful contribution at their school, in the community, or at a nonprofit organization like maybe a nursing home. Um, a tat, uh, excuse me, you, all nominations must be submitted to Youth Services by Wednesday, March 25th at 4.30 p.m., so that's coming up. If you know anybody that might be a good candidate, you can call Bristol Youth Services and figure out how to uh, submit that student for an award. And that's it for me. Oh, and those awards will be presented at the May City Council meeting if you're all interested in coming back then. And that's it for me, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, I have a couple things. 9 a.m. March 21st is the Shamrock Run and Walk, Chippens Hill Middle School. That's always a fun time. Um, I'd also like to uh, say we have uh, Ken Hicks, who's our nutmeg, one of our nutmeg guys, been with the city here for, for 11 years doing our show. He's moving on. This is going to be his last show. So I want to thank you, Ken, for all you've done for us. Uh, you've always done a great job. Thank you. Um, and then one more thing. This past, uh, this past, Tuesday, uh, we with the West End with the West End realignment that is moving forward. Uh, we met this past Tuesday with the DOT and the homeowners who are going to be affected of this. We had a private meeting with them to explain what was happening, um, and I'm just going to read a press release that was just sent out tonight. The Connecticut Department of Transportation and the City of Bristol will conduct a public informational meeting to discuss proposed improvements to the intersection of Connecticut Route of CT Route. 29 West Street and, and CT Route 72 Park Street and School Street to address the uh, vehicle pedestrian safety concerns and improve traffic operations. The informational meeting will be held on Tuesday, March 31st at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers of the City of Bristol Hall. So this is open to the public. Um, this is something that this administration has been pushing very hard. Um, this, this needs to be done in that, in that area. It's a very dangerous area. There's quite a bit of accidents every year. Um, so uh, we had a very good meeting with the DOT, and the homeowners. It was very receptive, um, and it's it's moving ahead. And I want to thank our public works director and, and his staff for all they've done to to keep this thing moving. So um, again, March 31st, 7 p.m. And that's all I have. Item number five. Consent calendar. And there are six items. Item 5A is to place on file the entire report for February 2015. 5B is the approval of tax refunds dated March 3rd, 2015. 5C is to place on file the recommendation from the Board of Public Works regarding approval to discontinue a portion of Pine Street. Item 5D is to place on file the recommendation from the Board of Fire Commissioners regarding approval to discontinue a portion of Pine Street between Ever Evergreen and Sycamore Streets. 
Item 5E is the Ordinance Committee to introduce amendments to the Bristol Code of Ordinances, Section 21-25, pertaining to enforcement of fines and penalties for snow removal, to waive the reading of the amendments and schedule a public hearing for March 18, 2015. And Item 5F is the Ordinance Committee to adopt amendments to the Bristol Code of Ordinances, Section 21-21.10, shopping carts. Move approval. Second. Second. Which means second to discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. And number six, committee reports, starting by far left. Yes, Your Honor. A couple of quick ones from the library. <laughs> Three more Sundays left at the main library. Uh, that will be open for Sunday hours from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. The library has been very busy on Sundays with as many as 315 patrons coming on one day. So that goes to highlight the valuable service that the library is providing the community by being open on Sundays. But only a couple more left. Also, free AARP tax services for seniors and low income continues through Tuesday, April 14th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the lower level of the main library. So that's through Tuesday, April 14th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the lower level of the main library. I wanted to make sure everybody was reminded about that and that's it for me, Your Honor. Thank you. That's all. Not for me. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say that the, um, we've got a couple of bridges in town that are going to get replaced. Uh, we put together a committee to select the engineers for the project and those are going to be going into the design phase. I just wanted to uh, Roger Rousseau to come up and explain the process just a little bit about what's going on. Because the bridges are being replaced is on Louisiana Avenue, which is pretty much a straightforward replacement. But we also have to replace the bridge on Memorial Boulevard. And that's going to be more expensive than this one people are going to be more interested in finding out about as far as design. Yes, thank you. Uh, there are actually two projects, as you said. Uh, Louisiana Avenue is uh, under the federal state uh, bridge replacement program meaning that we get 80% of uh, the funds coming from outside of uh, uh, the city government, uh, but it is a replacement project. Uh, that one uh, actually has a process driven by the program whereby we receive qualifications from firms, and then once we establish the qualifications, we determine which firm is the most suitable for it, and then we send that uh, offer approval for that recommendation. Then we begin scope development. And we, once we finalize that scope, we send it off for approval. Once we have the scope approved, we then send it off for fee schedule and ask for that approval. So it's a very long and arduous process for addressing the replacement of the Louisiana Avenue Bridge, but it'll be well worth it when everything is done. Again, there's Memorial Boulevard Bridge, which is a separate structure. Uh, that falls under a different program that goes to the state of Connecticut DOT. That one has roughly, I believe it's a 50%, uh, roughly a 50% uh, city match for the work under that project. It doesn't have the same strict guidelines in terms of the process, in terms of reviewing qualifications, asking for approval, going through the continual steps of approval. In the interest of uh, consistency in reviewing uh, the firms, uh, the committee elected to follow a similar methodology for both processes, and we did select two different firms for that work. Um, there's a firm, BL Companies, which we intend to pursue for Louisiana Avenue, and Wengel, McDonald, and Costello for the Memorial Boulevard Bridge. So we're still in the process of discussing scope with those firms to try and move forward. I will tell you one other thing, that one of the efforts that we tried to accomplish with this, there are other structures on our bridges that we will be uh, experiencing over the next couple of years. There is a, a large list of structures that we need to address. Engineering department asked if we could also incorporate into the scope uh, the ability to establish an on-call services contract so that then we can begin the actual continual inspection of the bridges to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that our bridges are up to code and compliance. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, okay. Real Estate Committee. Uh, I have a motion from the Real Estate Committee. Be it moved that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute an exclusive right to sell listing contract, MLS Group Listing Aid Agreement. The sale of property at 101 George Street, as shown on Cesar's map, lot map 31, lot 120, with Keller Williams Realty, with a service fee of 5% of the agreed upon sale price. Ask for a second. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Yes, I just have one item. 
um, per discussions that we've had before, that property has extensive code enforcement needs on it. So the communication between our committees is important when it comes to the point that we should really try to recoup what we've already cleaned that property for. We're certainly trying to get as much as, as, much as we can recouped on it. Thank you. Anything else? Any other discussions? Is that a, just a listing agreement? Is there a price on the? Um, I don't believe the price has been agreed upon yet. We have it okay. on that project. We would not make that public knowledge. I apologize. Typically what we've been doing is going out through the normal RFP process to try and solicit um, interest in properties. In the interest of trying to capture as much value as possible, that's why we've tried to go back to the methodology for using a realtor. So we're trying to capture actual true market value for the property. And that's why we've chosen to go <coughs> this route for this particular property. So we're aware of that there are substantial um, past issues with the property, and that's one of the reasons we've <coughs> tried to go this route, just to make sure we maximize our return. Anything else? Thank you. Uh, any discussions there? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. So, that's something. Yes, I got a few things. Uh, Ed, am I coming up? I'm going to ask Ed to say a few things about the uh, field committee. Thank you, Ed, for thank you, Ed, for coming. I know you're not feeling very well, but I'm toughing it out for me. <laughs> Oh, Steve Parker, you're talking about the synthetic field. Um, as a committee, we, um, we, we've been meeting for the last six, seven months, and uh, we're, we're, we're moving forward with Page Park. Um, we've cleared a hurdle with uh, Bristol Eastern High School to uh, allow us to uh, do some overflow parking over there. So presently now we're uh, putting together numbers, um, and then we'll, we'll probably hopefully the next month we'll come here and we'll present it to you um, in terms of what we're looking for to, to accomplish there. Um, right now, I don't know what the numbers are, but I think we're probably looking at trying to come up with something that's going to be phased in, so give you a little bit of idea of what we're trying to do. I, uh, just quick, I know last year when we first, when it was first presented uh, from the park, it was at the 10-year capital um, committee. Uh, that's not your intention of doing that this year, because I know we're meeting next week. I still have a list of that tomorrow. 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 Yeah. I still have it listed on the 10-year capital as a, as a, a smaller item. Um, I, do, I don't have the numbers to go for, but it, but it is on there for, for discussion, and hopefully we can keep that dialogue going. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be discussing it tomorrow. Anything else? Thanks, Ed. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Don't come to my office if you're sick. On the uh, marketing committee, just to give you a little update on that, the uh, marketing committee has, as you all know, has created and launched uh, and refined the logo. And uh, uh, the, uh, the launch actually took place at the home show. And the, po uh, the feedback has been very, very positive. Uh, they told they sold some merchandise quite a bit from what I hear. And I don't know if you all saw some of the coasters, uh, but the, uh, the All Heart logo was on one side and on the other side was some of the local uh, merchants uh, such as uh, Firefly, Double Tree, I believe, and uh, uh, Barley Vaughn. The uh, brand is, uh, has been getting used. I think a lot of you are starting to see it in some of the mailers, one of which was the Energized Connecticut. Uh, the uh, city has been using it on its letterhead, business cards. Uh, from what I understand, the public works is has also uh, te been testing a bumper magnet as well. And uh, what I really like about what's taking place is, is that we started it in all heart awards. And Nucci's was the first recipient of that for their 40 year anniversary. And uh, those that have received it since then, I know are very, very excited about receiving that all heart award. So, uh, and lastly, there is a uh, web page or website that's being developed and we hope to have that launched by early summer. And oh, one other thing is that there is a there's a list that's being worked on right now of all the city events. And I saw it for the first time today and I'll bet you there's at least 20 events that's 
already scheduled for the city of Bristol and as we go move forward we will be adding to that list as well. Okay. Councilman Martin, how do you get listed on that calendar? What's the mechanism for that? I think uh, simply by contacting the chamber. Through their through their online calendar that they had or is it is it something uh, separate for the marketing piece? Uh, I don't know other than can contact the chamber and <coughs> the, the direct you. Thank you. I do have the salary committee. Uh, I have a couple of motions actually. Uh, the salary committee recommends to the city council, motion too. The salary committee recommends to the city of Bristol to approve a position of skilled craftsman local 1338, code 7, at $20.76 an hour to $23.23 .23 an hour in the WPC Division of Public Works and to refer it to the, to the Board of Finance. Second. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I have one other item, something that's been pending for way too long, and I'd like to bring the motion to bring the non bargaining salaries and benefits to the table. Second. Second. Motion second. The discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the a 1.9 salary increase and 2 uh, percent cost sharing increase retroactive to July 1st, 2014 and an increase of $250 on each salary step followed by a 1.9 percent salary increase and a 1.5 cost sharing increase effective July 1st, 2015 for full-time non-bargaining and to apply such salary increase to the part-time mayor's administrative aid. Also to approve health care plan design changes including wellness components effective April 1st, 2015 and to reduce the maximum annual sick leave credit from 25 days to 18 days for full-time non-bargaining employees. Do I have a second? I have a motion made second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, no. One, uh, one no. Motion passes. Item number, any other committee reports? That is it, thank you. Thank you. Councilman, any other committee reports? Councilman? Yes, I have two. Um, I am, I'm going to start with code enforcement. Uh, we had a busy first quarter, and um, a couple of the data pieces that I'd like to update you on is a lot of questions about foreclosures, and there have been 46 since January 1st, um, ranging uh, mostly through District 3 and District 2, uh, although there have been nine in District 1 as well. Out of those, um, four have already been sold, several do remain vacant, and it's something that we are definitely monitoring. Um, code activity actually has not waned, even in the winter. Um, we've had um, dozens of complaints since the last council meeting. And I just want to draw a parallel to some of the comments that we've heard at other committee meetings and, and budget related. We've had um, an enormous amount of increase, I think, in illegal three family, no egress, um, basement apartments, illegal three families. And I think a lot of this is related to the economics of people trying to keep their houses. And we've also had, in the past three or four months, boarding houses, people literally renting out rooms. So from a housing standpoint, there's egress issues, there's fire safety issues, and in some cases, there's, it's also been compounded with hoarding. So it's been, um, it's not been dull, I think I can say. Uh, we are um, doing an increase with legal activity with um, liens, and I'd like to compliment um, Noel Bates, who brings us data every month from Corporation Council as to the judgments, which has been a great tracking tool. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, um, in terms of realtors, we've also had a situation um, with realtors trying to get the best price and ignoring code citation and abatements. And so, in terms of that, um, I just caution everyone that if you are interested in the properties or one of these addresses that we're dealing with, that you really do your homework. We had a situation on Frederick Street this past week that um, was really unfortunate in terms of, of what was happening there property of interest. Um, the other thing too is in terms of the activity, 
and what we're seeing, I, I just again want to stress the importance of the team aspect of code enforcement and the communication piece, especially in terms of the departments and how they interact together. And um, two separate items. The first is that um, we're having our third retirement off of code enforcement since I've been back on the council, and I just want to say congratulations to TJ DeCrisantis, who attended his last code enforcement meeting uh, last week, and he is going to be missed. And I also want to um, commend Tom Lozier, who is our code enforcement officer, in addition to Karen Wagner from Health and Anne-Marie Sungren from Community Services, who worked together last week to deal with a gentleman on Ingram Street who is a homeowner who had some issues and we um, were able to pull a lot of resources together for him, including Tom Lugier putting him in his car, bringing him to BCO for fuel assistance, and actually having his taxes done by Tom's accountant in order for him to qualify for the BDA uh, rehabilitation program. Really goes above and beyond, but I think it demonstrates the commitment that a lot of the people who are now into this code enforcement have seen and the results that they can affect. So. I think it was just a, a great example of three departments coming together and really making sure that this homeowner and resident of Bristol got what they needed. So that's code enforcement, if anybody has any questions. Um, I'm going to do a brief handout um, as a hopefully closing report. Uh, a couple months ago we had a lot of people here talking about the community cat issue and we effectively, I think, have dealt with the issue um, with one outstanding piece being the ordinance. I'm passing out a report which shows the, um, the new community coalition that's working together, the fundraiser they had uh, last month, the money that they raised, the distribution of where it's going to go, and how they're going to work out in the future. None of this uh, involves taxpayer money. Um, but it does involve, again, people working together who have like goals and who have resources to share. So that's the report that you can read at your leisure, but I, I think that that has been um, successfully resolved. The third report is another handout. Um, last night we did have a Memorial Boulevard Task Force meeting, and we are very close to our final report. Um, what I'm handing out to you is the draft of our proposed project phasing. And I won't go through it because it's, it's very well written and very um, thorough, but it shows what we're possibly looking at in terms of how to bring this project into the next segment. So that's for your own reading. Uh, we're going to try to get on the 5 the 10 year capital for discussion purposes. And um, I think that there's a lot of interest and community support in order for us to have a plan in place for what I think the majority of the community does feel is a significant building. So that's the report from last night. That's um, where we're going. If you have any questions about any of the phasing, when you have a chance to read it, obviously you can talk to me or any members of our task force who've just been phenomenal in what they've done to pitch in and taken on pieces of, of getting this done. We're still working on a management piece for um, the nonprofit, and we're also uh, working with some of the um, short-term issues that need to be done for the events. The events are important because they showcase the building and especially the potential, but even since we did it in November, the amount of calls from people who are interested in renting space, both on the building side as well as being tenants and occupants of the theater, has doubled. Um, we, we actually just received a letter of intent yesterday from a very large um, museum nonprofit that wants to relocate here, and the small businesses too are um, interested as well. So that being said, we have a small event scheduled for the spring. It starts in April. The first one is April 11th, which is a Saturday night, and we're approaching um, a different demographic with this one. It's a Queen tribute band, which will be led by um, Bristol native Joe Arshava. And this has already been worked out within the Corporation Council's office. So tonight, out of committee, I'd like to bring um, forward the um, contract with King's Rocks for approval. Um, it's, like I said, it's already been approved and vetted, but um, because of the short time frame, I have to bring it out through the committee process. Second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Um, let me just ask court counsel, you review this and you're all set? Okay. Yeah. Counsel, can you just explain what the contract is? Because usually we get in advance to read. It's uh, somewhere. Um, it's just, it shows their responsibilities and our responsibilities and how we're breaking up the profit. And then obviously our usual liability indemnification and insurance pieces as well. Between us and the entertainment group that's bringing in the band. 
and they're called the King's Rock uh, Incorporated. Any other discussions? Any not all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll oppose. Motion passes. Um, we also have another event on Sunday afternoon, April 19th, with the Yale with the Poops. Um, they have also sent a contract to the City of Bristol, and tonight I'm only asking for it to be referred to the Corporation Council's office for review. Second. Motion made and second. In discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll oppose. Motion passes. Okay. And um, we're going to have to go in reverse for a minute because I wrote a code item underneath MBS. I have two other items, um, and they were the ones that I sent to everybody on Monday, are property tax freeze assessment applications that have been forwarded by the Code Enforcement Committee. I sent all of you the before and after pictures. I wrote it under the wrong column. I apologize. But we do need votes to approve those applications. The first one is 73 Meadow Street, which is to the rear of City Hall right now, and the second one is 193 Center Street. And those have been vetted through Code Enforcement and just need to be approved to be entered into the program. Do you need two motions? Uh, it, sure. I'll make a motion that we um, accept the tax freeze for the Meadow Street property. Second. Motion made and second to discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. And I'll make a motion that we accept the tax abatement for the second property, which I can't remember what street it is. 193 Center Street. Center Street. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. And uh, I have no committee reports. Unfinished business, starting my far right. Matt. Uh, no. None. 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 Okay. New business, starting my far left. But you're getting off easy. <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, wait, we have one. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead. <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, I want to bring up the West End. Uh, 2011, we had the West End study uh, completed, and there's a lot of great information, recommendations that came from that study. And uh, one of the recommendations was the establishment of the, of the neighborhood group, which we, today we have the West End Association. Uh, and I, I really uh, would like to applaud the West End Association for, uh, for organizing and for uh, really, uh, I guess, demonstrate, demonstrating the, their enthusiasm and willingness to work to improve their own neighborhood. So, um, we, the, the report went on to say that implementing the suggestions and the recommendations from that from the West End study would require, and quote, is an unwavering commitment of time, attention, effort, and resources. And with, I think everybody on this, this council, I think we all have the best interest of the West End at heart. And uh, we want to continue with what the study, with uh, the words from the study, with uh, commitment to time, attention, effort, and resources. The DOT, as the mayor has informed us earlier this evening, that the West End realignment is underway. The design work is uh, is, is in motion, and the neighborhood or those uh, those that have a stake in that area. Uh, have been notified, but I'd like want to take another part of that plan, the study, and uh, I want to make a motion to have the city planner uh, to work with the DOT uh, in its design of uh, and, and draft of, of a pedestrian slash bike bicycle walkway, a trail, so to speak, that would connect Rockwell Park to downtown Bristol uh, to start with. And if we're aggressive, and I think. If we start with a vision, I think we can take it down to the boulevard. I think we can take it up Federal Hill. And if we're really ambitious, and I think we can take it up to the hoppers and maybe circle back around and eventually tie it in some way back to Rockwell Park. So with that said, that's my motion. Uh, we, have a, we have a second. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Your Honor, just for clarification to Councilor Martin, is this motion to 
to uh, or to ask the planner to look into how to do this. Is that correct? Am I understand that correct? Actually, Councilman, I I really would like him to get sit down and with the resources that he has and that he can use is to start putting a, a plan together. Gee, how we, how can we connect this? The plan, the West End study talks about using assets and one of which they identified as the Quabbin River. So we know that part of the DOT plan is to take down some of the houses, the property along that river. Why not use this as a, an opportunity to, gee, what can we create along the Quabbin River a pipe path to get down from downtown down to Rockwell Park. So to answer your question specifically, I can make a plan. Okay. So if he's making a plan, does that go to planning commission then, or does it come back to us after the plan is done? How does that process? I, I think usually it'll, it'll go through. Just <laughs> be funny to watch Alan sort of assess himself on it, you know, or uh -huh. to uh, <laughs> scrutinize scrutinize his own plan. Uh, so I believe that he, he would have to go through the planning commission for us. Right. Oh, God. Um, All right. Just curious. Want to make sure. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Business. Councilwoman. Well, I think that we're probably all monitoring the state budget issues. And I just want to bring to everyone's attention the fact that through the, uh, the budget bill 949, there is a proposal to eliminate and sweep all the revenue <coughs> attached to the Community Investment Act out of the budget for the next two fiscal years and bring it into the general fund, which would be, I think, roughly $56 million. Um, this is one of those issues that actually counterbalances all the unfunded mandates because the Community Investment Act is what funds the historic preservation grants, all of the um, agricultural, the farmland, open space, and so now they're removing that as a, a revenue source as well as opportunities for municip municipalities. I know that the cuts to human services are devastating. I, I know that it's a difficult budget and it's a difficult budget year. But I think that it would probably behoove us as a governing council to really start monitoring how some of these are going to affect us um, from a revenue standpoint as well as the opportunity cost standpoint. Because that's going to be something that many organizations in town uh, we'll lose out on. Currently, it's forty dollars is collected on every real estate transaction and put into this pool, and they're proposing that that pool go away. Anything else? Thank you. And I have one thing. Uh, it's the Regional Performance Incentive Program. And the proposed resolution authorizes Naugatuck Valley Regional Council of Governments to apply for a grant to the State of Connecticut Office of Policy and Management to upgrade the geographic information system for member municipalities. And I'll ask for a motion to be read. Yes, I have a resolution of endorsement and authorization. Be it hereby resolved that the City of Bristol endorse the Regional Performance Incentive Program pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 4-124S as follows. Number one. NVCOG, Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments, Regional GIS Data Development and GIS Website Enhancement. Number two, Senior Citizen Property Tax Loan Program Feasibility Study. Number three, Statewide Ortho Photography and LIDAR Data. I don't know what that means. Proposed to be submitted by CRCOG. Yeah, here further resolved that the Mayor Kenneth Beacock and the Acting Mayor be authorized to act on this endorsement by the signing of all necessary agreements and take all necessary actions related to this proposal <coughs> to enter into the binding agreement with the Office of Policy and Management in accordance with the terms of the RPI grant program. We'll have a second. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. Resolution starting with our left. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Motion passes. Item number nine. It's resignations and there are no resignations from Item number ten. Appointments. So, appointments. Commission on Aging to reappoint John Hartman, three year term. 2 3 18. To reappoint Helen Lobachowski, three year term to 3 18. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Uh, Ellen Lubitschewski, I don't know if she's still around. She's, she, uh, have you talked to her? Before? She sent me a letter. Oh, she did, okay. Yep. She wanted me reappointed. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. 
City Cemetery Commission to report Tom Lepore three year terms, 318. Second. So motion made and second to discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Bristol Downtown Development Corporation to avoid Joseph Gir Gennaro. Garino. Thank you. Garino to replace Gardner Wright, res resigned, unexpired term to 416. Second. Motion made and second to discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Mayor's Task Force on Energy Consumption to appoint Frank Stosky to replace Ricky Buffard as, citi as sixth citizen at large. To appoint Sean Dunn to replace Frank Stosky as Board of Public Works member. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. Your Honor, just quickly, is it? Am I correct in understanding that Commissioner Buffard resigned? Right. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Board of Board of Ethics. Are these voted on? Um, actually, no. Each. Person gets their own appointment. You okay. designate the person, okay. and then they get. The so, uh, Mayor, uh, myself, Mayor Kane, to designate, uh, to reappoint Thomas Mazzarelli, three year term to 318. Council Member Carlson to reappoint Timothy Krauss, three year term to 318. Council Member Martin to reappoint Kenneth Zertarski, three year term to 318. Councilwoman Fortier. To appoint Attorney Roger Chelson the third to replace Attorney Bernard Grabowski, three year term to 318. I, I do think he's Roger Chase on the second, but I'm okay, not we'll, positive. We'll, we'll just clarify that. that. We'll clarify that before we. Well, thank you. Does that matter? He might even be a junior. Well, definitely. I don't think he's the third. Whoever the attorney is, that's who we're appointing. Okay. Uh, Pine Lake Area Study Committee to replace Arthur. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, that's all. Um, Crystal Property Renewal Corporation to reappoint Alan Kozloff one year term to 316. To reappoint Jennifer Arjun Dumwix. Never say that. One year term to three sixteen. To reappoint Caitlin Humble, one year term to three to three sixteen. To reappoint David White, one year term to three sixteen. To reappoint Peter Matthews Jr., one year term to three sixteen. Youth Commissioner. To reappoint Dante Tagnello, under twenty one age rep, three year term to three eighteen. And to reappoint Kayla Morado, under twenty one age rep, three year term to three eighteen. Can I have a motion on those, please? So moved. Second. So made second to discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. I don't think we voted on the first property, did we? You, you didn't, but I kind of took it that you were doing all of them together. Okay. <laughs> I suppose you right. can. Uh, and then I have one more. Uh, this is the Startup Bristol Bears Task Force. And Justin, before I do this, can you just come up and give us a little rundown of what this what this is? Uh, and then I'll let someone announce who these. Sure, members are going to be, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, Startup Bristol is the new project that we're working on in the BDA and the mayor's office. Um, it's basically going to be a, a business plan competition to encourage uh, startup companies to settle in Bristol. Um, this is the type of competition that's done elsewhere in the country. It's done at places like Connecticut Innovations and universities. It's not often that you find a municipality that's good, that'll, that will do one. It's unique for us because obviously we want to help fund startups and innovative companies, but we want to fund Bristol companies. So if they're located outside of the city, um, this will be an incentive for hopefully these companies to move here. And if they're already located here in Bristol, um, it's an incentive for companies to expand and grow. Um, this task force really is the most important, I think, part of the project. And um, we've already started talking, and I think they're their main charge will be to uh, review, uh, help coordinate the process, but review and ultimately select um, the winners, if you will. But, but beyond that, um, there's going to be opportunity for mentoring from these folks to not only the companies that, that are funded, but companies that maybe aren't funded, but we still see great promise in um, for Bristol. Thank you. Uh, and I have to give Justin credit. He came to my office with this idea, and I thought it was a great idea. 
you know, and this just shows the commitment to this administration thinking outside the box, uh, not only working to bring uh, established companies to Bristol and help the ones that are here grow, but also work with new companies and help them grow. Remember, ESPN started out as a small company. Microsoft started out of their garage, I believe. So uh, nothing is out of the realm, and, and we're aggressively looking to increase our tax base, whether it be a small company or, or the largest company that we possibly bring into Bristol. So the following members are who is going to be on this, this task force, and I'm going to read a little bit about who the person is. Michael Zedman. Michael is a Bristol resident who launched Zion Solutions, a bio consulting company. Michael offers experience as an entrepreneur, experience in the fields of bi biotechnology, biological, and medical science. Adam Van Guten. Adam is a Bristol resident and a lifelong entrepreneur. His most recent venture is founding of Onyx Spear Company, a distillery producing Onyx Moonshine, their first premium American moonshine, as well as Connecticut's first whiskey. Eric St. Pierre. Eric is a Bristol resident and co-founder of Parts Tech, an innovative online platform that helps mechanics save time and money by simplifying auto part ordering process. Kathy Faber. Kathy brings over 28 years of small business ownership and a retail experience as the, as the owner of high-end clothing company Kathy Faber's Designs. Kathy is known throughout the Northeast and is a top formal wear designer. Eric Warshell. Eric is owner of Fax Axle, located on Broad Street in Bristol. After traveling the country in his race car, Mechanic, at the age of 19, Eric settled in Bristol to form Fax Axle, an innovative manufacturer of race car axles. Sean Taylor. Sean is co-finder of Jaru, a firm that provides enterprise-grade software and innovative technology solutions to some of the world's largest companies and institutions. The task force will also receive guidance from Connecticut Innovations, the state's leading source of financing and support for Connecticut startups. So as you can see, um, we have some pretty impressive people on this board, um, and I'm excited, and, uh, and Justin, this great job, uh, you know, as a department head, you've really taken that department to a whole other level. A great job. Resolution regarding approval to file JAG 2015 Violent Crime Prevention Grant for $30,000 with the Connecticut Office of Policy and Management for wages and salaries, wages and supplies for community policing and authorization to execute. And there is a roll call. There is a resolution and a roll call vote. So we're here to read. I'll read it. Be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut that the filing of a grant application for the JAG 2015 Violent Crime Prevention Grant funded under the State of Connecticut Office of Policy and Management for $30,000 is hereby approved and that the Mayor Kenneth B. Cockane or Acting Mayor and the Chief of Police or Acting Chief of Police are here authorized to execute such application and any and, other, and all other documents related to this application funding grant including but not limited to any final funding slash award slash grant documents. Be it further resolved that this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. Second. Motion remains seconded. Discussion. Hearing none, all, uh, roll call. Judge Mayor Farrar right. Yes. 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 Chair votes a yes, and motion passes. Item number 12. Resolution regarding approval to file fiscal year 2015 distracted driving high visibility enforcement grant for $39,400 with Connecticut Department of Transportation Highway Safety for accrued overtime expenses and authorization to execute. And there is a resolution to read. I can read that, Your Honor. Being hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut, that the filing of a grant application under the State of Connecticut Department of Transportation fiscal year 2015 Distracted Driving High Visibility Enforcement Grant is hereby approved and that the Mayor, Kenneth B. Cockaine, or Acting Mayor, and the Chief of Police or Acting Chief of Police are hereby authorized to execute such application and any and all other documents relating to this application slash funding slash grant, including but not limited to any final funding slash award slash grant documents. May it further resolve that this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. I have a second. Remain in second in discussion. Hearing none, roll call starting with our left. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes, motion passes. And number 13. Resolution regarding approval to file the elderly and disabled demand responsive transportation grant for $57,275 with the Connecticut Department of Transportation. 
to expand the dial ride program and authorization for Ma Mayor Kenneth B. Cucking to execute, and there is a resolution to read. I can read that. Be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut, that that the filing of a grant application to the Connecticut Department of Transportation for $57,275 with a city cash match of $70,160 included in the Bristol Department of Aging's 2015-2016 budget request and projected $1,000 in fair revenue for a total program budget of $128,435 to expand the dial right program is hereby approved and that the mayor, Kenneth B. Cocaine, or acting mayor is hereby authorized to execute such application and any and all other documents relating to this application grant, including but not limited to any final grant documents, be it further resolved that this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, roll call. Starting my far right. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Motion passes. Item 14. Award of contract 2C15 to Sanitary Sewer Repair between Lakesley Street and Brewster Road to Tobacco and Sun Builders Incorporated for $127,660.50 and authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion made second. A discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Item 15. Award of Contract 2P1558A to, to Lorero Engineering Associates Incorporated in accordance with the schedule of hourly rates through March 31st, 2018 and authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute any necessary documents. Move approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion passes. Item 16. Award of Contract 2P1558B to RC Design Associates Incorporated in accordance with the schedule of hourly rates through March 31st, 2018, and authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute any necessary documents. Move approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 17. Resolution regarding economic development grant for $140,000, which includes $8,000 for job creation to GMN USA LP for purposes of designing and constructing a manufacturing facility of approximately 28,000 square feet at 181 Business Park Drive. And there is a resolution to read. I can read that, Your Honor. Go ahead. They hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut to provide an economic development grant in the amount of $140,000, which includes $8,000 for job creation to GMN USA LP for purposes of designing and constructing a manufacturing facility of approximately 28,000 square feet at 181 Business Park Drive and relocating GMN USA LP to said facility subject to normal provisions. Be it further resolved that this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. Second. 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 Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, roll call. Sorry, my friend left. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Motion passes. Item number 18, I'm going to refuse myself. Uh, this is my son's pediatrician. start to read the item. Resolution regarding economic development grant of $56,640, which includes $3,000 for job creation to the Pediatric Care Center LLC for purposes of designing and constructing a medical office building of approximately 4,000 square feet at 1301 Farmington Avenue. And there is a resolution to read. Speaker, to read it? I'll read it. Be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut, to provide an economic development grant in the amount of $56,640, which includes $3,000 for job creation to the Pediatric Care Center, LLC, for the purposes of designing and constructing a medical office building of approximately 4,000 square feet at 1301 Farmington Avenue and re relocating the Pediatric Care Center, LLC, to said facility subject to normal provisions. Be it further resolved that this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. Roll call starting with our left. Well, under discussion through the chair, I gotta be honest, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but uh, this happens to have been my pediatrician too, up until actually 
as it turns out, very recently. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't, does that mean that it's a conflict for me too, do you think? I don't know. I don't know what my uh, colleagues think. Council, I, mean, I, I don't think you ever paid any money to them, right? Well, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying it wouldn't have been no. under your parents' insurance. Yeah, you're right. All right, all right, good. So never mind. And in that case, the answer is yes. <laughs> any further discussion for yourself? Oh, okay. Okay, roll call starting on my far left. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes, motion passes. Somebody said, Carrie, tell the mayor to come back in. You missed the good opportunity, <laughs> Singer. <laughs> the first time since I've had to leave the room since I've been there. You guys didn't get out of control. Item number 19. Resolution regarding authorization for mayor or acting mayor to execute application for CMAQ grant through CRCOG for $75,000 to purchase root management software. And there was a resolution to read. So I'm okay to read it. I don't want to be a hog, but I can read it. Sure, I okay. <laughs> Okay, hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut to authorize the Mayor or Acting Mayor to execute an application for CMAQ grant funding through CRCOG in the amount of $75,000 with a city cash match of $15,000 to purchase group management software. Be it further resolved that this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for any necessary action. Second. second. Discussion. Hearing the resolution starting my front right. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Motion passes. Any other business? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes.